Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Gordon Bell, Vice President of Marketing at Energis Corporation. And today we'll be also hearing from Neeraj Sajbal, Senior Vice President of Marketing and Strategy at Energis, as well as Paul Travers, President and CEO, and Matt Margulis, Director of Business Development and Strategic Relationships at Vuzix. Our webinar today is focused on what up wireless charging and next generation smart glasses. During the webinar, we'd like to invite you to submit questions by using the Zoom Q&A function. At the end of today's presentation, we'll have time to answer many of the questions that you submit. Our agenda for today is the following. I'll begin today's webinar with a brief background on Energis Corporation and our What Up Wire Charging technology. Nir Sahaj Paul will then speak about the specific advantages of our RF-based charging technology, as well as our Smart Glasses Developer Kit program. We'll then hear from Paul Travers and Mark Matt Margulis of Vuzix, and at the end, we'll uh, open it up to Q&A. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, Energis at a glance. For those of you who have joined our webinars in the past and have uh, uh, listened to us, uh, this might be a little bit repetitive, but it is important for a lot of the new folks that we have on the webinar to kind of give a little brief, brief background. Uh, we are the developer of WhatUp. It is RF-based wireless charging. We call it wireless charging 2.0. And we are technically a fabulous semiconductor company. Our NASDAQ ticker is WATT, W-A-T-T. And we've developed proprietary watt-up wires power technology, which consists of semiconductor chipsets, software controls, hardware designs, and antennas. Um, you notice there we're approved to ship in 112 countries, as well as including the European Union, Japan, and North America. And we're the first to get FCC Part 18 certification for power at a distance charging. Uh, we have over 223 patents issued with 110 patents pending. Uh, we're roughly about 55 employees and we were founded in 2012 and corporate headquarters are right here in San Jose off North First Street. Uh, we talk about the wireless charging evolution and it's important to kind of understand, you know, how are we different than some of the other technologies that you might be familiar with. Um, when we talk about wireless charging 2.0 versus what you currently see, which is wireless charging 1.0. Um, wireless charging 1.0 is what most of us have on our phones today, uh, which is a coil-based system where you have a very large flat coil on the back of your phone, and you have to align that fairly specifically with a large flat coil on a charging surface. The issues with that is obviously the, the size of the coils uh, and the requirement primarily for a flat surface uh, that really impedes the ability to implement that technology into a lot of different types of products. And it's really one of the reasons why you're really only seen in on smartphones. Um, but the other issues that consumers are, are complaining about with that charging is the very finicky nature of uh, the coils, you know, having to line them up pretty close uh, to start to charge is fairly problematic for a lot of consumers. Also, other limitations, you can't charge at any meaningful distance, meaning, yes, you can charge when you place your device on top of a charging service, but that's pretty much it. You can't do any charging over the air, which is what we do. Uh, we do both contact base as well as over the air. Uh, once again, uh, that need for the flat surface uh, and the contact uh, charging, that really eliminates a lot of different applications for wireless charging that needed coils um, in that if you look at small devices like in the ear hearing aids and other devices, there are no flat surfaces and they're very small and the coils simply don't uh, play well in that environment. Um, also with coils, you see that it can only charge one device per transmitter, whereas we all know that we want to have a transmitter or a charging surface that can charge all of our devices. Uh, imagine that you can place your phone, your earbuds, uh, smart watches, fitness bands, uh, key fob from your car, all these different types of devices on a charging surface and be able to charge them as they wanted to be charged at the certain rates they wanted to charge. Also, um, uh, the, the match size uh, for coils between the RX and TX, that's one of the issues. And then challenges with smaller receiver size. Um, being able to charge very small devices is something that you just don't see with coils. Sometimes there's thermal issues, other times there's uh, actual footprint size of uh, coils in, in, interrupts that. Um, and then the overall higher cost of RX implementation. Our vision for wireless charging 2.0 on this slide talks about where we see our technology. 
both in the home, the home office, uh, industrial applications, retail applications, even military and health and safety applications. Um, being able to take devices and make them a lot more rugged, um, getting rid of that charging port, that USB port where you plug a uh, USB charging cord into them. Uh, being able to remove that makes the product a lot more uh, rugged in that it can be waterproof and also uh, eliminates the possible uh, breakage of that USB connector. It also allows a lot of those devices to be a little bit thinner because you get rid of that connector. Uh, let's go back to that slide real quick, sorry. Um, you can see that uh, FCC commissioner recently noted that he believes that wireless power may be vital for the success of future connectivity and productivity. This is really the, you know, what we see in, moving in as a society as so many more devices are around us and part of our daily lives from our fitness bands and smartwatches to obviously our smartphones that uh, we all use um, and other devices both in the home and workplace. So next slide. Um, some additional advantages of our RF based wireless charging. Very small in terms of the footprint. There you can see that our, our, C, uh, our chip uh, scale package chip. It's 1.7 millimeters by 1.4. Uh, so very small in terms of implementation. Antennas can be very unique and shaped for the device. Can actually be part of the PCB. Um, we support both near field and at a distance charge. And this is key. Um, there's, the, there's technologies like the coil-based uh, technologies out there. They only do contact-based charging. Then there's some other folks that talk about over the air charging only. And there's issues with that if they don't have a near field solution because uh, you don't have any in-the-box solution for these small electronic devices. We actually support both. Um, so you'll actually see devices from our partners typically going to be including a near-field charger in the box with them, but those devices can be charged over the air from, say, a future uh, you know, smart speaker or other type of devices that have our at-a-distance charging incorporated into them. So that ecosystem of both near-field and at-a-distance charging is, is very unique to us simple implementation and this is really makes manufacturing and implementing our technology a lot easier than coil based stuff uh, simply that we have a flexible antenna design allows for a very small footprint and support for curved and not flat surfaces universal transmitter supports a variety of receiver devices and supports simultaneous multiple device charging uh, so that's very unique compared to you know the one-to-one -one transmitter receiver um, implementation that you see with the coil-based stuff that's out there today. From a user-friendly experience, this is how, um, if you ask consumers, how do they want to charge their devices? They don't want to have to think about, they don't want to have to align certain things. They want to simply drop and charge or place it next to a device, like uh, a, a, an updated smart speaker that has charging over the air at a distance. Uh, we also have improved foreign object detention uh, versus the coil-based systems. And once again, rugged and sterile designs for these devices. Uh, very important for waterproof products, um, but also very important for health products where they want to be able to sterilize them um, in a lot more aggressive manner um, and be able to sterilize the devices completely or hermetically sealed is what they want. Uh, also with uh, sterilization, we don't have any exposed metal. Uh, unlike pogo pins and some of the other uh, uh, pogo pin based charging, uh, we don't have uh, the need for exposed metal, which can erode and become problematic with uh, either salt water, or perspiration, or other uh, solvents being used for, for uh, sterilization. Uh, we have a few different reference design platforms uh, from IoT and trackers to hearables, hearing aids, and smart glasses. We're concentrating a little bit on smart glasses today. Um, that really is unique in that typically most smart glasses are gonna have antennas in both of the temples. So we can actually power up. On the slide, we talk about 80 milliwatts. We have some additional things that we uh, will be talking about today that brings power up. Uh, but being able to charge the temples and the antennas and batteries that are, that are in those temples is uh, unique. And we can do it both from contact base, which is what we're showing on the slide, as well as over the air which is something we showed and talked about a little bit with the What Up Power Hub in our previous uh, webinar last month. On our next slide um, is the Power Hub. This is something that it, it, we announced uh, last month. Um, this is a developer kit that we offer to our 
uh, or partners, and it shows the ability uh, for wires charging at a distance or over the air. Uh, the Power Hub is very scalable. It uses 5.5 watts of transmit power, but our partners would actually be able to increase that or decrease it based on their need, based on the size of the application, batteries, and, and, and what their charging profiles for those batteries are. Uh, for the Power Hub itself, that has a charging zone of 15 centimeters, once again, uh, that is scalable based on applications for our partners. It has a very small size um, in terms of uh, build materials and, and bond cost, um, but with that, um, you can actually be even smaller. Um, the Power Hub is a standalone device with its own power supply and, and Bluetooth and other functionality, but if you were to take that technology and put it into an existing product from a partner, uh, we would use their uh, power supply and Bluetooth uh, circuitry. So you wouldn't have to duplicate that. You'd actually just take um, the core wireless charging functions of our power hub. Uh, it is based on our FCC technology. Uh, let's go back to that slide real quick. Sorry, Nerd. Uh, it's based on our FCC certified technology um, and uh, the applications we identify for power hub, not only smart speakers, but also gaming consoles, desktop speakers, Wi-Fi access points computer monitors, teleconference equipment is really unlimited. You know, we don't have a, a huge list there, but uh, you can imagine that technology coming out into a variety of, of uh, applications. That's one of the fun things about uh, working at Energist is not only seeing these applications that we all kind of see and, and can identify, but also some very unique things that some of our partners come to us with. So very excited about those things. Um, from the, some of the benefits is that true drop and charge experience where you can just place a device close to our what up power hub or, or so say a, a, a product from a partner that uses, uses this technology you don't have to specifically place you just kind of place it close to that device and it would just start charging based on uh, the handshake that it does through bluetooth identifies it and starts charging based on that battery profile and it's a universal transmitter support of a variety of devices uh, receive devices charging at the same time or one to many uh, with the scalable T tx architecture so we can do higher power and higher distances based on application once again. Uh, so next slide. Um, global regulatory advantage this is something that truly separates us from some of the other folks that come out and talk about wireless charging over the air. Uh, we've invested heavily into um, our, our regulatory team uh, and our actual facility here. We have a full anechoic chamber. It's very large um, with the complete SPIAG DAISY 6 SAR robot. Um, I don't know of any other company that does what we do or talks about what we do that has uh, this type of facility in, in their location. Um, we're approved for sale in 112 countries worldwide. Um, our strategy is that we work with um, a global network of industry experts and different countries, and we are kind of blazing the trail for our What Up technology, and we bring our partners and their products through that. Um, so we're very heavily involved with worldwide regulatory, um, but a, a unique in-house testing capability that's unmatched. Um, our partnerships, uh, if you're familiar with uh, us, you will know that we've been a longtime partner with Dialog Semiconductor, extremely uh, engaged with them and their sales and marketing group. Um, the first bullet point says it all, it's a tremendous synergy. Uh, they have a very strong leadership position in Bluetooth, BLE, as well as PMIC and consumer electronics. Uh, if you walk into any Best Buy, uh, you're going to find their technology inside many of the devices that are inside those stores. Um, we leverage their world-class sales and, or and marketing organizations, um, as well as operations. Uh, we, of course, maintain our ownership of all intellectual property, um, but we work with them ex extensively on customer engagements as well as application support. Uh, we participate in a lot of different trade shows with them as well, supporting customer initiatives. Most, uh, most obviously we, we participate in their CES presence uh, each year as well as some additional smaller shows throughout the country and throughout the world. Uh, other partners, uh, we're a longtime partner with SK Telesis. Uh, they are the core partner for the Delight PSAP that came to the market last year. And they are also looking at smart classes and IoT solutions using our technology. Uh, POSCO, uh, which is part of Pyvex, uh, excuse me, Pyvex was part of POSCO. Uh, they, we announced a, a partnership with them. They're looking at uh, wires charging for their ultra wideband trackers for industrial IoT. And then Primax is an ODM CM partner for us for our standard uh, transmitter sites.
Next slide. Uh, with this, I'm going to turn it over to Neeraj. Neeraj is going to give us a little, little bit more detail and in-depth knowledge about uh, our wires charging as it pertains to smart glasses. So with that, Neeraj, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Karan. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, yeah, good afternoon in Europe. Um, I think let me just briefly uh, talk about the smart glasses, why uh, this segment is of interest to us, and uh, why this uh, our technology is the best fit for these kind of application. And we are very blessed to have Wuzix, who is going to come uh, after uh, my presentation to talk about different kind of application. The interesting thing about smart glasses, it does started, it did start from um, AR VR application. Uh, that was the first place where it started to show up about uh, five to seven years back. But over uh, the last five to seven years, new kind of applications are coming. And they range from uh, consumer application like, uh, you know, the audio. We start to see different kind of medical application where uh, digital feed can be done for the transition or the bifocal. And the more interesting market is the industrial where different kind of glass use uh, cases are coming. Even in the defense, we start to see a lot more application of AR VR combined with different kind of audio application. So uh, as you see, the smart glasses market is expanding significantly, and it is bringing a lot of use cases. But there are some challenges with this uh, platform in terms of charging. Uh, they are very small. The, the Most of the area that is available for electronics is in the temple, and this is very small. You don't want to have very large or heavy temple. That means the electronics, the charging, all that has to be miniaturized and it has to be kept in those kind of um, small spaces. And the charging requires multiple uh, receivers because you need to charge both the temples. Then you also need to have different angle of charging because these are not flat surfaces. They're bigger in size. It's, uh, so I think if you start to look towards uh, what up and smart glasses are made for each other. These, the application is growing and uh, the charging, which Wuzix will talk about more about it shortly. You start to see that there is a, a natural fit for these two technologies. So let's just talk about, before we go into the uh, our offering for the smart glasses, let me just share our perspective of the um, wireless charging 2.0, especially for the RF. Um, as, as you see, the, you can segment the RF charging market or overall charging market in many ways. What we think is the best way to represent the segmentation for this market is to map the distance as compared to the receive power. On the X axis here, these transmitter to receiver distance and the, on the Y axis, we talk about the receive power. And you see the, so many applications <coughs> are, can be mapped into this framework. Um, the near field, which what you call is 0.5 centimeter, it goes all the way from one milliwatt of sensors in buildings to 40 watt of industrial, even higher than that. The smart glasses in this context is about 50 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt of the consumer applications. And then you start to see 500 milliwatt to one watt in the industrial or retail application. And we start to see two watt or kind of application for the AR VR. So we start to see the, the application for the glasses from the uh, power requirement is diverse. It requires multiple charging and it continue to go towards um, higher power because the application is increasing. But the interesting thing about smart glasses is, is near field sufficient? Near field is a good place for charging to happen for this larger um, application platform. But what we are really interested in is in the midfield application, which is from 0.5 centimeter to one meter. And that's where our power hub is becoming very, very important. Now you could see that you can drop your glasses within 15 to 20 centimeters of a transmitter, which can be integrated into a smart speaker, which can be integrated into an industrial uh, application or a retail application. Now you can charge the smart glasses, multiple of them through a uh, water power hub kind of application integrated into various devices. And that's what we are most excited about. Our ability to charge near field at a faster rate while still providing the efficient charging for the water power hub kind of a use case is making, is making us very differentiated and best suited to, to uh, allow us to provide the solution for the 
smart glasses technology. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, the core of our company is semiconductor. Let's talk uh, briefly about what all kind of solutions which you are providing and how they are enabling uh, smart glasses today. On the transmitter side, uh, we have the transmitter chip, which are highly integrated. Um, they are very cost effective because they have been done in a small size using CMOS technology. What they do is not only they provide the processing of the charging, they allows you to have the authentication also, which is very important in certain application, which are mission critical application. You do not want a rogue receiver a turning on a transmitter, which is possible in a technology like Qi because of foreign object uh, detection issues. We have a, a very close loop in terms of what receiver uh, can turn on the transmitter to charge. We, we detect not only the through BLE, we also detect through our patented technology on the RF side. So that allows you to have a very secure, authenticated um, closed loop system where you can only charge the receivers that is meant to be charged from a designated transmitter. In addition to that, we also support beam forming chips, which is uh, which can go all the way to eight antenna, which we will be using for a higher distance technology. Uh, if you look into the the what would it take really to take a RF charging technology to the next level, you need to control from end to end efficiency. What that means is on the transmitter side, you cannot really use off the shelf power amplifier. You need to have a dedicated constant waveform technology. And we have developed uh, a scalable power amplifier portfolio that can go all the way from one watt to 20 watt. Even our technology can go higher than 20 watt also. That allows us to have the most efficient transmitter uh, implementation because these, these power amplifier has been designed for wireless power. They're not designed for the communication where the focus is not on the efficiency, but on the fidelity. Uh, our receivers in the same way, very scalable architecture. They go from one milliwatt to 20 watt. Now that allows you to have a structure where you can have a similar uh, receiver design that can go for very small power when it's needed. Uh, when you're storing these glasses all the way to very high power when you have to charge in a fast charge scenario. For example, you have used it. Now you want to come back and within half an hour, you want to go back again. Then these devices can be charged at a higher rate. Um, in addition to the, the chips, there are two key elements of, of our design, the antenna technology. We have developed significant antenna portfolio that can be implemented into various aspects of these glasses, various sizes of these glasses, uh, various material of these glasses, which we are making it available as part of our uh, development platform. And, and the system and the software hardware, if you look into the, from that perspective, the system hardware that binds everything together, the chips, the antenna, the the BLE software, that's very important. That's the only way you can create a closed loop system so that the efficiency of the charging, end-to-end -end charging is the best. And the, this is what we mean by that we have the portfolio that can enable the smart glasses uh, market. So let's just talk about how, what is available if you're looking into a smart glass application. Um, we have a developer kit, which we announced some time back. Uh, let me just briefly talk about that. Uh, you can take this design and most of our customers are able to ramp their uh, product development very quickly with the antenna, with the transmitter, with the receiver implementation that we have done in our development uh, developer kit. Uh, this developer kit is available today and uh, you can talk to us, you can send us an email, we can uh, discuss with you how we can enable with that. Uh, this is a fully form factor design that can be implemented into the temple of the, the glasses, it can charge two receivers and it can be charged from a small transmitter which can be implemented into a case or any kind of a other platform which you may have for your glass design. So what is included in this kit? We will provide you a, a transmitter hardware, we'll provide you the reference design for that, we'll provide you the receiver design as well as how you can integrate the receiver design. We will provide you a mobile app that can monitor the transmitter receiver that you can integrate into your um, app platform. We will provide you the complete schematics for the transmitter receiver as well as the layout files and all the antenna design files that you need. In addition to that, we can also provide you the mechanical files for the, our developer kit if you would like to leverage that. And in addition to that, we provide the firmware SDK that you can integrate with your BLE on your glasses. So what it means is 
if you look into the package which you're providing with our developer kit, you can ramp your design very quickly and you can get to a production category uh, design very quickly. So let's just talk about what does a smart glass developer kit uh, really includes. If you start from the left, this is the transmitter design. Uh, as you might know, we use 900 megahertz for the RF power and we use out of band BLE uh, for our control protocol. The reason for that is um, we wanted to make sure our design is capable of higher power when the regulatory limits are increased as part of part 18. So we use 900 megahertz for that. 900 megahertz, as I mentioned in uh, our blogs and, and previous um, webinars, is probably the best frequency for, as you compare in terms of uh, the SAR, in terms of emission, in terms of efficiency of semiconductors, and it also provides the best possible antenna design solution with all the technology we have developed. Uh, 2.4 BLE gives you the control. The reason we have gone for 2.4 gigahertz BLE because these BLE technology is available on your device today. We can leverage the BLE infrastructure that you have on your receivers. We can port our SDK to it. And this is the most cost effective design that is available for RF power today. Uh, DF14682 uh, on the transmitter side is a dialog BLE solution that we use on a transmitter. Uh, DF4100 is our integrated transmitter chip that can control the transmitter design. And 3210 is our CMOS power amplifier. It can go to one antenna or many antennas, uh, depending upon your design. The receiver side, we can have one to four antennas, depending upon what level of design you would like to implement. Our receiver, uh, DA2223, uh, is a four receiver uh, design that you can implement to increase higher power, or you can have the diversity. So if you see here, what we are really providing is a scalable design that and uh, a toolkit for our customers. And we are ready to work with you to, to, to design a uh, platform solution that's the best for your use case. Your transmitter design can be in from the case or it can be in form of a uh, different uh, carrying uh, uh, setup that can be enabled through this kind of scalable design. So what does a typical engagement look like for this kind of a design? Um, when the program start, you can evaluate the design with a reference kit. We can enable you with that. Or if you like to straight away go in terms of proof of concept. So we work on a lot of proof of concept for our customers. What does that proof of concept mean? We will take a couple of your receivers, for example, different kind of glass combination. We will implement our receiver into those designs. We will provide you a standard transmitter, which is the reference kit transmitter. And now you can see the receiver charging happening on your device in your use case, which is very, very useful for our customers. Uh, once that evaluation is complete, um, you have decided to start the designing process. Our team helps you go through the EVT, DVT, and PVT all the way to pre-production. At every stage, our regulatory team is working with, with you in terms of making sure when the design is completed, it's ready to go for, for the FCC or other kind of uh, certification. In pre-production, our team will work with you very closely in the production environment to make sure the yield and all the other criteria that you may have can be met, and then it goes to the mass production. Uh, we are working with multiple of our partners in various stages of this cycle, and we are ready to uh, to support more. Thank with you, that, uh, We're gonna go ahead and switch over to uh, Paul Travers, President and CEO and Matt Margulis, Director of Business Development and Strategic Relationships at Buzix. Uh, they're gonna talk to us a little bit about their applications as well as their thoughts on wireless power for smart glasses applications. Hey guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for thinking of us. And uh, you know, you have devices in the field and you know, we have security and applications and, and all of these type of things. And then the other part of it is also, you know, you have a large fleet of devices, you know, how do you, how do you charge them? So um, that's always on the mind of customers as they look at larger numbers and, and deployments is uh, just one of those things, you know, the infrastructure just to charge thousands of units at a facility 
a warehouse. I mean, these are things that people need to consider. So uh, timing's perfect to have this, uh, you know, this, this webinar and we're, we're thrilled to be, be part of it. Um, so if you want to just go over kind of the, you know, so forward looking statements, we can go to the next slide here. Uh, so Vuzix, uh, we're a public company. Uh, we've been around since 97. Uh, we have offices in the US, Canada, UK, Japan. Um, and we have, you know, we, we ship globally. Uh, we're in, you know, 60 plus countries. Uh, we do a lot of work in uh, North America, Europe, uh, the APAC region. Uh, Intel is one of our largest shareholders and we got our start in the wearable display uh, business. So we did a lot of work with the US military. Um, we did our first pair of smart glasses about 2014. We have tens of thousands of these out in the field. We're on our uh, third or fourth generation, depending on how you look at it from the chipset or just the product. Uh, and we've learned a lot in, you know, power management and uh, performance. These are all things that are, you know, very important to our customers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, if you look at the AR smart glasses market, um, you know, it's still fairly small today. Uh, but if you look at analysts report after analyst report, um, they're expecting this to be, to be big. And um, with a lot of new technologies, it starts in the enterprise space. Uh, and then also you, you'll see that consumer space uh, emerge as well. Think about iPads and, and kind of new uh, forms of computing. You know, they started out in the enterprise space and they move to consumers and for consumers it you know boils down to price point it's form factor um charging i mean all of that battery life these are all kind of important creature features that are uh, needed there and for enterprise it's about productivity uh and delivering value and, and we're starting to see a lot of that today uh next slide please next one all right, so this is the market that we support today. A lot of work in enterprise. Um, so this, this could range from your warehouse and logistics. You know, a lot of folks today, um, they're doing a lot of uh, contactless. So you're, not, you're, not, you're not touching things when you're ordering things. You're, you're getting, um, you know, pick up online. So we're seeing that in, in stores where uh, there's online picking and, and, and they're using our technology and those type of uh, big box retailers. Uh, using our stuff to basically get work instructions on the screen. They get they get told where to go. They scan. They fulfill the order. Uh, manufacturing. It's about uh, work instructions. Also, if a piece of equipment breaks, you get the kind of the the idea of you know step by step how to fix it. Um, and then we're seeing kind of a, a really big uh, push into telemedicine. Uh, we have our our stuffs in you know thirty plus facilities uh, today around the around the globe. Um, some of the bigger ones are Johns Hopkins, uh, UCLA, uh, University of uh, Medical, uh, Louisville Medical Center. So they're using our stuff for triage, for training, um, patient care. Uh, you know, we just had a, a knee replacement surgery done last week using our glasses. Uh, we have stuff in Taiwan where they're doing 16-hour heart surgeries using it. Um, so, you know, performance, battery life, all these things are, are really important. And for field service, it's about remote support. You know, you can't send your technician on a plane today. Uh, you know, due to the environment and also companies are always looking for this solution and, and the, the world today has really changed and it's, you know, probably changed for good. Um, travel's really down and, and this is a technology that can really uh, empower your, your team, bring productivity. Um, and a lot of companies are finding that people working from home and, uh, you know, they're still getting things done. So it's, it's an exciting time. So this is, you know, telemedicine. We mentioned uh, Johns Hopkins, University of Louisville, uh, Taiwan. So these are some of the examples. Um, you know, our technology is really being embraced in, in a lot of uh, telemedicine and uh, healthcare. Uh, this is this is the workhorse today in the market. It's the M400. Uh, it's got a Qualcomm uh, chipset. You got an autofocus camera. Think of this as a uh, basically like a, a wearable. Uh, Android phone, except it's in a smart glasses format. Um, as Gordon and team kind of pointed out, you know, you have this small device and everything's in there. You have, uh, there's a small internal battery, there's all the CPU. So the, the form factor is very small. The ability to put in uh, more technology is, is very limited. So um, battery and, and charging is super important. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a big part of what we do. And this has a, it's a quad, it's an eight core processor. It's got a beautiful OLED display. It's really great. Um, and the chipsets have come a long way to support smart glass as well. The folks at Qualcomm, they have a whole AR VR line and, and they've done a great job um, kind of supporting the space and putting out chips that really 
uh, augment the hardware. And then this is this is our kind of our latest uh, device that's coming out shortly. It's the M4000. It's still built on the same uh, Qualcomm uh, silicon. Um, it's going to have Android 9. And, and what's nice about this, it's optically see-through. Um, so this lets you kind of be part of the environment. Uh, you still see it, and you just have an optically see-through dis uh, display. It's a it's a 28 degree field of view, which is kind of equivalent to a you know a 50 inch TV at 10 feet away. So you're getting a kind of living room experience while looking out uh, through the display. It's built on the Vuzix Waveguide Optics, uh, which is which is super. Um, you know, it's, it's just a great product we have, and it really leverages RIP. Uh, so we see this is really big into uh, you know the warehouse thing. So if you're going, you're picking parts, and you're getting this, you don't have to look down in the display and try to remember what you have. You can just see it. You can be engaged with the environment. You get all that information there. And then healthcare is a big one. Um, you know, not having you can actually just see through this, get the information. Uh, and the camera is kind of set up where it, it overlays and it grabs the information uh, right as you see it in the display. So those two things are pretty closely lined up, which is exciting. So this is. Uh, you know, we just started uh, shipping our DVT units uh, this week to some nice developers, and uh, we'll be having this one out in the market here over the next uh, few weeks. Um, and then, you know, we support enterprise. So we have a bunch of different ways to wear these things, whether prescriptions, hard hats, safety glasses, headbands. I mean, um, all day use is our goal. We're, we're very lightweight. We, we, we put a lot into a, a little, um, a little format. So the, the form factor is small, but the performance is powerful. So we're going to go over the views displayed. Um, so this one's interesting. This is has our 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 see-through optics, um, and you guys have pointed out like the battery in the temple. So this one has two small batteries, internal batteries in the back. It's a fully contained um, device. The M400, M4000, those were devices that have a sm very very small internal battery, and then we rely on um, you know, a cord that will go and power the device. So think about how do you charge all of those devices? You know, what, what way could you integrate wireless charging into supporting those um, kind of accessory uh, batteries? Uh, with the blade, this one's self-contained and, you know, we'll kind of go over our next generation stuff, but we're gonna make these things smaller and smaller. So um, a big part of that is how much performance can you get? You know, how do you maximize the battery? You know what are different ways to to charge this? You know how do we how do we do those things? Um, and then if you go to the next slide, we're actually going to be uh, upgrading the blade here shortly. Um, yeah, so we're we've added a few things. Uh, you know, the first device uh, was a little bit challenging to get audio in there. We've added audio built in. So if you guys are familiar with the Bose uh, AR frames, we now have. Uh, stereo audio built into these. Uh, we've also added a autofocus camera. Uh, so if you're doing um, different work in enterprise, you're getting not now you're getting the the audio. So you don't have to have a Bluetooth headphone. You still can use those, but it's built in. Autofocus camera camera makes it great. We've also uh, added uh, speech recognition, and then we have a color battery that gives you you know 10x runtime. Um, and these are all things that could be you could include wireless charging in and, and definitely an exciting way to power those uh, accessories and the batteries that are required to run the hardware. So next generation, and this is where, you know, if you think about the consumer space, um, you know, things got to get small. Um, means the battery gets smaller. You're going to have to optimize uh, power. Um, we have to think about unique ways to to charge these uh, devices. I have four kids and we have cords all over the place. So, you know, bringing another device uh, into the house, uh, the challenge is going to be, you know, how do you charge them and, and how do you how do you do that? And wireless charging, I think, can be um, a big part of this. And, and what's unique about our next generation stuff is it leverages um, micro LED technology. So these are display engines that uh, are very small. They require less power. Um, they're lower cost and then, you know, they do support some of the, the fashion based um, industrial designs. Uh, so again, low power, low cost, that's slim form factor. I and mean, we can put, um, you know, a lot of compute into something like this and, and the battery small, 
And, you know, we're doing a lot of work with uh, wireless carriers around LTE and 5G uh, cellular options. You know, how do you leverage uh, the low latency and the application layer? Um, but the biggest thing we always hear about is it's the how long will it run? You know, what's the battery? And, and these are kind of key factors with the design, not only just the look and feel, but, you know, how much how much time can you run this? What's the runtime? Um, so those things are exciting. Uh, next one, please. All right, so you know, kind of wrap up. We we look at the smart glasses, and you know, we mentioned as you're doing more and more deployments. No. Sorry about that. Working from home has, has its benefits. Um, so as you're as you're doing uh, larger deployments, I think you know the fleet management it's it's how do you charge these these devices um you know people don't prefer cables it's definitely it's definitely not there in the medical side again you know how can you charge these things the cables are a pain uh so it's it's a it's a big part of of our you know solutions you get into scale is is just part of the solution i mean it's it's the security it's also the need for charging and how to do these things at scale so you know, we're very interested in, in the wireless charging. Um, I think our customers are as well. And as we get into more and more volumes and, you know, companies need uh, solutions that cover, you know, thousands of stores and, and hundreds of thousands of employees. I mean, this is a kind of a key part of, of our, um, you know, deliverable that we need to figure out. So we're excited to, you know, to, to partner here with, with Energist today in the call and, and looking forward to, you know, seeing how we can work together and, and solve some of the problems that our, our customers are seeing. Thank you, Matt. Um, we're going to start and open it up for a QA. and a um, Would like to invite folks to uh, go ahead and send over their questions. Use the Zoom Q&A function. Um, that way we do have quite a few of them already in the queue, but we'd love to get some additional questions. Um, Neeraj, uh, this one's for you as, as well as uh, Matt. Um, the first question obviously is, what's the future relationship between the two companies, Vuzix and Energy Corporation? Is there an agreement, agreed product, excuse me, is there an agreed product which is gonna be released or what can we potentially expect? Yeah, let me take that Matt first and then, uh, uh, I, I think we do not comment on our customer uh, or any kind of partner we have. I, I will let uh, my, Matt speak about how he sees the value in our technology. We are very excited. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is a great segment where we can use the, the, all the benefits of water in the best possible way while enabling what these uh, platforms can do. Matt? Yeah, and from our side, I think if, if I could speak for our engineering team, we're always looking at solutions that can augment our products and how they're going to be received by our customers. Um, and if I look at the, the Energist tool set and, and what they have from the capability, this is a you know, technology that we keep a close eye on um, and certainly something that you know, we see incorporating uh, into future products. So you know, we, we definitely are, are super interested and in, um, you know, we'll evaluate things and, and, and do as, as we see fit. But I think um, this is a big part of, you know, charging is a big part of the customer experience and certainly something that we want to uh, keep keep very close eyes on. And a follow up one for you, uh, Matt. Uh, someone's asking, um, you know, why Vuzix is currently not using pogo pins like some of the other smart glasses that are out there. So maybe some of the, the issues that you've seen with pogo pin uh, usage in smart glasses. Yeah, we've we've exp we've worked with a, a variety of um, kind of connections um, today. If you look at the M400, this is a it's a USB type of C uh, solution. So that's a C to C connection that that delivers um, pretty well. We, we've done some custom um, connectors in the past, um, but it's really kind of driven by you know. So our our product is typically worn with a um, smart glasses on one side and then a, a wire to a battery, um, and then also from a safety perspective, we need something that's pretty. Uh, robust. So, you know, we did a lot of work with Verizon and, and actually found the safety benefits of having 
um, the kind of a lantern setup where you're able, a lanyard setup where you're able to have uh, the cord kind of rest around the neck. So having that uh, USB connection, it's, it's pretty robust. It, it stays in place pretty well. Um, so a lot of it's driven by the wearability and actual kind of the pro the customer needs um, on that side. So because that solution is, is usually worn, um, you know, that, that kind of drives how that connector works. Great. Um, Neeraj, I got another one. Um, let's see. Uh, don't most smart glasses already have antennas for Bluetooth and or 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, most of them has uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, because that's the core uh, feature of uh, any kind of a smart glasses today. Yes, they have. The, is this question related to why don't we use 2.4 or should um, expand? There's no, nothing else on the question, but uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, in terms of... Um, yes, so they have 2.4 gig antenna and the Bluetooth hardware. Yeah, I mean, from us, we have uh, the Blade runs off 2.4, the M400, M4000 series with the XR1, that's a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, and all the devices have a BLE... Uh, a connection radio in there as well. Good. Um, and once again, uh, we have a few more questions here, but if there's any additional questions, love to have uh, those submitted through the Zoom Q&A function. Um, what is the power received by smart glasses using over-the-air charging? Mirj? Yeah, so it really depends. I mean, as I said in one of the slides, um, there are various factors for it. Uh, distance between transmitter and receiver uh, is the dominant one. And then you have to also look into um, what is the transmitted power and what kind of a receiver design you have. But the way they, this question is that what amount of power you really need. For example, uh, for a medical kind of application on a smart class where you're only turning on the shading of the lenses or different, uh, you know, the optical behavior of the lens, you don't really need a lot of power. In that case, it is about 20 uh, milliwatt per temple. Uh, in the case of audio glasses, uh, where you're it's almost like a hearable kind of a use case, uh, you would probably need 200 uh, milliwatt. So it really depends upon the application. Um, and, and I saw a question, why don't you just stay with one watt? Our approach has always been providing a framework for a scalable architecture. We're not looking into what is needed today. We wanna to make sure our architecture is going to survive the applications demand tomorrow. So that is one of the reason why we have gone towards part 18 because that allows us to have a uh, scalable power uh, delivery over time. So it depends upon what your application is, um, what kind of power requirement you have uh, and during your use time. Yeah, I think there is some some uh, confusion over Part 18 versus Part 15. One of the questions we received is, why do you need Part 18 approval if Part 15 already allows up to one watt received? And that's actually incorrect. Um, part 15 allows one watt transmit. Um, part 18 allows a transmit over one watt. So it's not a receive. Uh, it's actually a transmit for Part 15 yeah. of max one watt. So that's why we moved to, like Neeraj mentioned, Part 18 for most of our applications. Um, another question is, let's see here. Um, does, uh, this is getting back to the What Up Power Hub uh, that we discussed, and they're asking if it has a fan inside the uh, device, the What Up Power Hub. No, we do not have any fan. And uh, I would like to clarify one thing. What we're showing here is our development kit. This is not a form factor design. As you know, Energis is a semiconductor vendor, we are not a finished product like, you know, something like Vuzix, like we really rely on our partner uh, to do the final uh, design for their product because they know the requirement of their product, how they want to differentiate in the market, even in that segment, the best, we do not know. The form factor which you're seeing is basically a, a, a development kit form factor where um, we foresee that uh, our implementation will be done in various form factor, all the way from Wi-Fi access point to, to, to automotive car console. And there, there is no uh, fan required in our application. 
and which alludes to any kind of thermal inefficiency which we don't have. It's a very simple design because of the cost effective nature. It's a single power amplifier, single antenna design that can provide the charging in a charging zone of about 15 to 20 centimeters. It's highly differentiated from a cost perspective. We have put product at the center of this design. That when, when you look into the product, what is a real, a real product? It should be cost effective, it should meet uh, consumer benefit, and that's what the focus is. Um, getting back to pogo pins, uh, another question is, um, a lot of the smart glasses have pogo pins for wireless charging inside of a carrying case. What are the advantages of what up in a carrying case type of charger? Yeah, so um, I think Matt can also elaborate on it. But how I see pogo pin is, don't look at what is available today. Think about what would be needed tomorrow. And uh, especially in the post-COVID scenario, nobody would like to have any kind of a contact that can harbor the germs. Uh, they would like to have monolithic design. That's how wireless charging is becoming very important in these devices moving forward. And pogo pin also has the limitation in terms of uh, the freedom of charging. For example, if I have a pogo pin, I cannot really charge in a power hub use case. But if I have a water charging enabled on the receiver design for a class, not only I can charge fast in a near field scenario without any restriction on where I put the glasses on the, on the transmitter, but I also can charge the same glass in a power hub use case where you can charge at a distance, which is not possible with Pogo. Yeah, speaking of monolithic design, it, that brings up, you know, a lot of the smart glasses are adjusted specifically for individual users. Obviously, we all have different size uh, bodies, different size heads. Um, and in Pogo Pin, uh, if you adjust them too much, that might bring the Pogo Pins out of placement. Uh, so there's other issues with that as well. Matt, did you want to chat, chat in on that? Yeah, we haven't done too much with the, the Pogo Pin um design we've been using more um connectors so uh, as far as like the wireless technology i think you guys have a closer handle on the, the pogo pins versus something else i mean for us i think we look at the wireless technology as something that you know our, our glass is going to be used you know in enterprise for a full shift you know consumers are going to use them uh during the day so something that can charge and deliver a charge overnight so they can walk in the next day and have their uh device whether it's work, whether it work or home be charged. I mean, that's kind of the goal is to, to deliver that, but not have to, to fight over, you know, wires and, and, and that type of thing. And I think you guys have some software too, that you can kind of, you can view and, and see the status. And I mean, that's all part of the, the suite here, right? Right. Yeah. The, the software allows for, um, you know, ecosystem um, reporting back so that in the instance of, you know, 500 to let's say a thousand uh, smart glasses being charged in those large um, deployment uh, facilities, uh, being able to identify, oh, you know, I, you know, smart glass number 77 is not charging. The battery is, you know, has an issue. You can actually go and attend to that versus Pogo pin or uh, USB plug. You plug them in and kind of hope that by the uh, end of the charging session, everything's working. And when you multiply that by thousands, uh, there's always gonna be an issue with something. Um, so being able to have that reporting back is something that we see a lot of uh, applications being very interested in. Yeah, and I think it's looking into from an enterprise perspective or retail or mission critical applications. Uh, when you need these devices, you want these devices to be available. You do not want to charge at that point in time when you need it. And having the ability to monitor the charge and ability to selectively charge devices to make sure they are ready to go is very critical for those application. And, and with all our integration we have done at device level monitor as well as at, at a, a warehouse level monitor, that's going to be very useful moving forward in those segments. Right, we're getting close to the end of the current uh, questions that are in there. So if there's anyone else with questions, please submit to Q and A. Um, quick question on the NF230 transmitter. Uh, is there any issues with heat um, when you charge smart glasses? No, we're not seeing any issues with heat. And uh, that has been the hallmark of our uh, design on the receiver side because heat, uh, we need to a little bit understand uh, where the heat is uh, important. For example, from a receiver design where the 
uh, the area, the volume of the receiver device is small. Having a very efficient receiver design is the most important thing. And that's what we have done. If you look into a receiver design, it's highly efficient all the way from antenna to the battery. And if you have seen our recent announcement on the battery partnership, that's what we are looking at. We want to make sure the receiver design is most efficient all the way to the battery from the antenna. And what, how does that help? The design is very efficient. First of all, it is very easy to implement. The risk of implementation goes down. But the biggest benefit is, is the thermal. Because if the design is very efficient on the receiver side, less thermal issues are there. And that's what our focus is. Okay, I think that's it for questions that we have. Uh, okay. uh, this concludes our June 2020 webinar on What Up and Next Generation Smart Glass. And we'd like to thank you for sharing your time with us today, and we look forward to having you join us again on our July webinar. Uh, more details on that will be coming uh, over the next few days and weeks on our social channels, uh, so stay tuned for that. Or you can also check our webinar page for additional updates. Thank you once again for everyone participating and for those uh, checking in. We'll also be doing another webinar today at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Thank you once again. Thank you.